Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be working on board number 6 in the 15 PlayStation 5 board that I bought on eBay. So, if you haven't watched the other 5 episodes, this is episode number 6. I won't spoil what's happened in those ones, but I will leave a link to a playlist where you can find all of those videos numbered. So, just for some context, I bought 15 PlayStation 5 motherboards off eBay for £900. Yes, that's a lot of money, and yes, it is probably a little bit foolish, but on the other hand, I run an online store where I sell parts and components for game consoles, and I needed these for stock. So essentially, what I do is I take the components that are working off non-working boards, and I sell them to my customers because it puts parts out there in the wild. So essentially, these are just an investment to me, but I did think to myself, well, why not make some videos in the process, see if I can fix any of them, because they've been declared as scrap boards and they've also been declared in the listing as unfixable. So if I can't fix them, I can't get mad. Someone's already worked on all of these boards, they've declared them as unfixable, but one thing that's unfixable for, something that's unfixable for one thing, one person is not always unfixable for someone else. So yeah, like I said, not gonna spoil the other videos, highly recommend checking them out. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you do want to organise a repair, you can check out the website consolefix.co.uk. You can book it in, send it over, and I'll do my best to repair your device for you as well. So with that being said, let's get into this repair. Today's video is brought to you by my own online store. Whether you need HDMI ports or charging chips, you'll probably find it at Console Fix. We sell disk drives and power supplies. Just trust me, bro. I tell no lies. If you need stuff, just check the store, because I'll probably find one on my workshop floor. I've got parts to get you going, and I already know. This ad, it's mind-blowing. So get your wallet out, don't be a dick. Just spend your money, a console fix. Alright, I'll stop rhyming now. Console fix! Right, so if you've watched any of the other videos, you'll know that most of these boards have got at least one component missing. So... On the last board, I will spoil it a little bit, on the last board, the only thing that was missing was a diode, I think. But on this one, it looks like there's an encoder missing. Well, I say it looks like there is an encoder missing. So the HDMI encoder has been salvaged off this one. So we're going to need to put that back on before we actually work on this and, you know, try and fault find it and things like that. So, yeah, it's uh, going to need a little bit of work. But other than that, it does look like there's nothing else that can be... Uh, that needs to be replaced before we can get some voltage readings and stuff and, you know, see what the symptoms are, etc. So, yeah, let's get that replaced. Let's replace that encoder first and then I'll, you know, I'll go over the board with uh, a multimeter and stuff, see if we can figure out what's actually going on with this. So here's where the encoder is supposed to be. And as you can see, it's missing. So I'm going to need to replace that before I can do anything else. So what I'll do then, I'll grab an encoder off a donor board so this is a donor board I've got and the encoder looks like it's never been taken off so I'll take this encoder from here and I'll put it onto the board that we're working on just so we can test a few things first so I'm going to set my hot air up at 440 degrees Celsius 40% airflow okay so there's the encoder that I need I'll just drop that roughly in place there And I'm going to flow this on and just get it soldered so we can get some voltage readings because the PS5 won't boot without this encoder. It won't even attempt to turn on, it'll just give us a single beep if this encoder is missing. If you see some jump cuts, I'm very sorry. For some reason, right as I've started recording, my uh, OBS has decided it wants to start playing off. So if you see some jump cuts, it's because it keeps coming up no signal. Okay, let's just clean this up and then I can give it a bit of a visual inspection, just see what's going on with it, whether it's uh, soldered or not. I'll just dry off that isopropyl alcohol. 
There we go. And yep, it appears to be soldered in the right place. I'll take that. Okay, so what I can do now, now that I've put the missing component on, I can plug this up to a power supply and first of all just see if it actually turns on. Uh, you know, we don't actually know what's wrong with this at all. So first of all I can see if it turns on and if it doesn't I can do some voltage readings and stuff and just try and figure out what's actually going on with it. So I'm going to get myself a little test rig made up here. So all I need really is the heatsink and the power supply and the buttons. I don't really need much else to test it. Pop in the power supply or the power cable rather and It looks to be completely no power. So the first thing I'll do then is make sure I've got 12 volts coming in. You'll have to take my word on this. I haven't got the bench supply hooked, uh, the bench multimeter hooked up to the PC. Yep, we do get 12 volts coming in. Still no signs of life. So let's check for a 5 volt rail. Yep. 3.3 volt. Yep. Uh, 5 volts over here. Yep, 3.3 here, yep, 5 volts here, yep, 2.5, uh, sorry, 2 volt there, uh, yep, that's all present and correct. Alright, so we can't really go any further because this doesn't get activated until we turn the console on. Uh, same as this one down here as well. So we're supposed to get 5 volts here, we're supposed to get 0 0.8 volts here, 2.5 volts here. Uh, but that's not until we turn it on. So what I'll do now then, rather than, uh, you know, messing around anymore, I want to see the boot sequence. So when you turn these on, when you first turn them on, you're supposed to get an initial current draw of around 300 milliamps. So basically, when you first apply power, it will start drawing current, it'll climb up steadily to 300 milliamps, and then it'll drop back down to 0 0.04, so 4 milliamps. And that's when we know that all of the power rails have got power, and that uh, it's basically an initialization. That's probably the easiest way to say it. It's, uh, when the console's being initialized, uh, that's what happens. I will just check a couple more areas. So I'll check this area here, this area here, this area here first. And then I'll try and get the voltage readings. Oh, sorry, not, not the voltage readings, the current draw reading for the boot sequence. So let's just have a quick look. So 5 volts here. Yep. Do we get... 5 volts there on that side of the fuse and on that side of the fuse. Okay. 3.3. Oh no, sorry, it's 2. <coughs> 2.09 there, sorry. <coughs> uh, 5 volts on both sides of that fuse. 3.3. Yeah, okay. We are getting the voltage rails by the look of it. Alright, how about on the resistor for the power button? I can't access it from that side because the power supply is actually plugged in. I can just check the resistor down by the power button connector. 3.3 volts, yep, okay, so we're getting all of that. And yeah, all of that so far seems normal. I've got a feeling this is a boot sequence ever. Let's have a look, shall we? So I'm going to hook it up to my bench power supply then, rather than... Uh, you know, keep scanning for voltage rails. We could have a short down here, but I'd just rather see the uh, boot sequence, to be honest. So I'll set my bench power supply to 12 volts. I know there's no issue with this rail because it's actually 11 coming through. If it had a short, then the power supply will go into protection mode. So I know I can apply 12 volts safely. Yeah, we've got a little bit of a boot sequence, but nothing nothing that's going to allow this console to turn on. So it's jumping between 0.004 and 0.009.
So I'll just show you this here. It's going to be this middle one here. It's a little bit awkward for you to see because I don't really want to move the camera out. But if I just show you this here, when I apply power to this, you can see it jumping up and down, up and down, up and down. What we're supposed to get here is we're supposed to get a 300 milliamp current draw and then it's supposed to drop down to 0 0.004. There's definitely a short of some kind on here. All right, well, that gives us absolutely nothing to go on. <laughs> to be honest, absolutely nothing to go on, but uh, never mind. So I'm going to switch to continuity mode then, and I'm going to hunt around for some shorts. Oh, oh, ho, ho, hello. Well, we have this inductor here, which is damaged. Hmm. Right, well, that needs changing. I don't know... Is that going to affect it? No, I've got zero ohms, so that's just the case in what's damaged. That would need changing to be able to use this board, but that's not an issue. Uh, let's check this fuse here. Zero ohms, yes, yeah, so that fuse is good. Let's check this fuse here. Zero ohms, okay. 260 ohms, yeah, okay, well... That's not normal either. Actually, that is increasing. Hold on a minute. 300, 400 ohms. We could just have excess current in this board. You can't make heads or tails of it because it's... Uh, it's all over the place, yeah. Because the, the caps are not discharged, so... All right, well, that's false readings. Ignore that. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to go back into continuity mode. It's going to be easier to test things. It saves me having to look at the multimeter. So, no issues around here. What about over here? Um, I think this is IPA for when I clean the board just. That gets me every time with that trace looking like that because I always think it's the input and it's not. It's this side. Damn it. Stupid caps. Alright, no issues around there. Not expecting to see any shorts around. Oh. Hold on. Right, <laughs> another false reading. Hmm. I'm going to leave this for a couple of minutes. I keep getting false readings. So I'm going to leave this for a minute just to get some uh, some proper readings. And we're back. Okay, so I should be able to get some normal readings now. The capacitors seem to be, well, seemed to be recharging constantly and giving me false readings. And that's better. Now I'm not getting beeped when I, uh, when I probe this cap. So, yep, no short there. No, it's really annoying when they're still charging the caps, to be honest. Uh, let's just test some of these caps around the Wi-Fi IC. Again, we've got missing caps. This is annoying, this is. Because this is happening during shipping. I really do wish the seller would have packaged these up. Yeah, no shorts around there. Okay. No shorts there. Check these MOSFETs. No, absolutely no shorts. Yep, I'm getting no strange readings so far. You'll have to excuse it if it goes in and out of focus, by the way. Let's just double check this area again because well, I'm not I'm not really concerned now, but I was, so just for peace of mind. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not an issue. All right, okay, well, there we go then. So it is always best to keep it unplugged for, you know, five to ten minutes before you start testing voltage rails and stuff. Normally it wouldn't be a problem because I'd have to disassemble the device, but obviously when you don't have to disassemble the device to be able to test it, you get caps which are still charged and things. So it gives you false readings. Testing. Okay, that's uh, what is that? No, I don't think it's anything. All right. 
Yeah, so I'm not getting any readings out of the ordinary here. This looks like it's got warm at some point. Yeah, no readings out of the ordinary. Hmm, this one's a strange one. Yeah, this one's a very odd one. This one doesn't seem to be uh, showing any signs at all. Oh, very odd. Yep, no signs of any shorts. This one could be rather difficult. Not seeing anything so far. Absolutely nothing. I'm just going to check these. Nope. Let's check around here. Uh, I'll pop into diode mode and check these MOSFETs. Yeah, uh, a little bit strange. Uh, damn it. I'm checking in, uh, <laughs> I'm a bit of a, a dweeb today, I was checking, uh, right, shut up multimeter, I was checking in diode mode with the red probe on the input side of whatever I was testing, and that is not the right way to do it, because that's going to be charging the caps up. So we have to reverse the polarity to prevent it from charging everything up and pairing on the circuit, which is why we always put red probe on ground. So the only thing that I'm finding on this board is that damaged indu inductor. So, yeah, I'm going to change that inductor. But it's very, very unlikely that this is going to be the cause of this issue that we're experiencing here. Very unlikely indeed. But that is literally all I'm finding here. It's not showing any signs of being bad. Um, I'm testing these MOSFETs that are on the other side by testing these caps as well. Right, yeah, nothing at all is showing up. I don't think that's gonna cause an issue, but I'm gonna change it anyway, just because it's the only thing I'm finding. This one's rather annoying. So I'm gonna remove this inductor. Like I said, it is reading a zero ohm, which is correct. It's obviously the uh, the Hemis that you really need to test on this, but I don't have access to my LCR tweezers. They're still in a box somewhere, so I can't test the inductor. But I will change it, just in case. I'll set my hot air at 480, because it's a fairly high temperature area, being MOSFETs. Uh, they're designed to dissipate a lot of heat. Okay, there we go, so that's removed. So, yeah, I'm not finding anything apart from this. Um, I honestly don't know what could be wrong with it. There's a couple of things I could try. Um, I could definitely try changing the BIOS IC, just in case it's become corrupted. That's always a possibility. Just add some leaded solder there. I'm gonna grab an inductor from a donor board, so we've got one here. I know it looks different, don't worry, it's absolutely fine. There we go. It really does take a while to get that off. I just added some flux there, sorry it was out of focus, I didn't realise. Not with it today. No, it's just so I keep changing between boards and it changes the focus. Right, okay. Let's just quickly inspect this liquid metal. Let's just make sure this isn't causing an issue because it can. It usually causes a two second blue light of death, but yeah, 
I lost my train of thought. Me sentence then. He normally costs. Uh, costs. Hmm. He normally causes a two-second blue light of death, but I don't really know what else he can cause. You know, I suppose it depends on what. Like, if it is short, I suppose it depends where it's short. We've got no liquid metal seeped out. Um, that was me. So this bit here was me, as I've just pulled it off. So I'm not really bothered about that. Uh, let's just check my boot sequence again. Yeah, we've still got nothing, 0 0.007. That tells me that there is definitely a short somewhere, but oh, it's just finding out where the bloody hell it is. That's the only problem, knowing where it is. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to change that BIOS chip and just see if it is a BIOS issue. So this is the Winbond BIOS I see, and it is known to call us boot sequence errors. Whoops, just pinged that off. So there's a replacement BIOS IC, and I know this BIOS IC works. Right, that's partially soldered, let's add some flux. There we go. So I'll just check my boot sequence again. Haha, <laughs> we've got a boot sequence. We have a boot sequence. <laughs> this should turn on. The key word here is should. Not going to say for definite that it will, but it should. So let's get a front panel. Ready? Ooh. Wait, what? Aha! We've now got a beat back, but it doesn't actually power on. But that is a little bit closer than where we were than where we were a couple of minutes ago. So now we could have another issue. Oh, hold on. No, uh, never mind. So, uh, so a single beep like that can be caused by the Wi-Fi. I see. That's why I was feeling that. Although, that's a little bit warmer than I would expect. Even though we have just had heat in that area, that would, that would be residual heat. Is that getting hot? Here's the thermal cam on it. No. Anywhere else? And we have got some residual heat around. Although, you know what? Okay, that is very weird because that, let me zoom in so you can see what I'm trying to get across here. So, if we look here where this Wi-Fi IC is, so this is a Wi-Fi module, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Look at this heat signature. And it tells me that the hottest point is 36 degrees Celsius, right? So, I'm not sure if that's, how well that's coming across. I might need to zoom in a bit more so as the light doesn't reflect as much. Right, okay. Right, that's better. So, look at the heat signature. Take a look at that. Right, we've got no, nowhere that's really sticking out. We've got some reflections here. Ignore this, this is off the desk. We've got no reflections here. Turn it on, or attempt to turn it on. Is it going to do it again? No. All right, maybe not. All right, so where else? Do we get any more anywhere else that lights up? I've got to get rid of that stupid light. Um... No, not really. Uh, SSD controller. Okay. 
So the SSD controller gets warm for a split second. So does that PMIC. So the SSD controller is here, but on the other side of the board. That's why it's only reading as like 30 something degrees Celsius. So that gets warm, but nothing else does. So something's preventing it from carrying on with the boot sequence, or rather the uh, the power rail activation. So, okay, what we can do now then is we can test these voltage rails again now, and just see what rails we're actually missing. So we've got a five volt there, a 3.3. .3. So I'm gonna check all of these again, just because we've got something different now. 3.3 and now because it does attempt to power on I should be able to get my test voltages with the other rails so when I attempt to power this on I need to put it put this to a ground so I can free up a hand so when I attempt to power this on now I should get 0 0.8 volts on this bank of three caps here and I do okay and I should also get 2 volt, 2.5 volts there, which I do, okay. I should get 1.37 volts on the RAM. I do not. I do not get 1.37 volts on RAM. I should have 12 volt there, we do. Do I get 5 volts here? I do not. Okay, so I'm not getting 5 volts here. And I'm not getting the RAM turning on. So, if I were to, for example, inject into this rail here as I turn it on, would that make a difference? Let's have a look, shall we? So let's ground this. There we go. And uh, we get 42 milliamps of current draw. Okay. So what about then if I inject 1.37 volts into the RAM? Because that's how much it's meant to take. Four hundred milliamps of current draw. And nothing. No signs of life at all, but we do get four hundred milliamps of current draw there. So that's telling me that something's happening. It should, I don't think it should be drawing four hundred milliamps. Oh then again, fifty milliamps per chip, maybe. 420 milliamps of current draw. No signs of life. All right. Uh, a single beep like that. It could be the encoder. It could be that the encoder is not soldered properly, or you know, it could be anything really. But a single beep like that tells me that one of those rails is not enabling. Yeah, I'm going to try resoldering this encoder first. See if that makes any difference at all, and then if it doesn't. I'll try changing it, because the encoder could be bad, I haven't tested it. I haven't done any tests on it apart from checking the caps around it, you know, the surrounding caps. It could have a bad south bridge, I could have floated the south bridge while I was replacing that BIOS chip. But that's always a possibility as well. You know, I could have oxidised one of the pads or something like that. So I'll put a quite small tip on my iron, add some flux all around. And then I can use some hot air along with the soldering iron just to assist me with reflowing these joints. Okay, there we go. So I've just touched up those joints, make sure there's no bridges or anything like that. But honestly, the chip looks good. So I'm just gonna check my boot sequence again. Okay, yeah, that's not quite a normal boot sequence it goes to 220 milliamps and then drops down so that's not going to boot yeah so it jumps back up to 220 milliamps so that's not 
that's not doing a full boot sequence. It's kind of, uh, there's one rail missing. And I don't know where. Hmm. Let's try putting that other BIOS chip back on. Actually, no, let's reflow the safe bridge quickly because I could have floated that while I was putting that BIOS chip on. So let's reflow that safe bridge before I do anything else. So hot air set at 440 degrees Celsius, 40% airflow. I'm going to do this without the microscope because I like to have a, a straight, you know, a straight angle with the nozzle. Actually, you know what? Doesn't exactly make for good, good content, does it? When I'm not using the microscope. So I could have floated the one side of the BIOS chip, so it is probably best to reflow it. Okay, I'm going to leave that to cool down. Okay, I'll check my boot sequence. I'll do it under the microscope. Okay, that's weird. I don't get any boot sequence now. I get 0.046. Mm, that's odd. I'm wondering if I should change this south bridge, but I am going to just try switching this BIOS chip back first because it is always a possibility that it could be the BIOS chip. And as you've just seen, we do get that boot sequence. Well, we did get that boot sequence, but uh, just by changing the BIOS but leaving it off for 10 minutes does tend to reset them so that's the original BIOS that's on there now I'll check my boot sequence again no 0.059 so it has reset that boot sequence or the BIOS rather so it has allowed this BIOS to now be used, but I still have that very odd boot sequence. I think I need to change the safe bridge. It could very well be that the safe bridge is faulty anyway. So I think I might have floated the safe bridge. That is possible. Or I might have damaged the safe bridge by reflowing it. Dang it, I just burnt myself and slipped. Ow. That hurt. Never mind. Right, so let's just clean up these pads. I think I need to change tips for this. Let's just add some flux. There we go. And then I'm just going to wick this solder away. Okay, there we go. Nice and clean. Uh, let's get it into position. And then with no nozzle on, 440 degrees Celsius hot air, 40% airflow. Let's flow this chip into place. Come on. So I'm looking now for this chip to, well, the flux under the chip to basically suck up and then splurge back out and then suck up again and then start pulsating. Splurge back out. Suck back up again. And start pulsating. 
Yeah, there we go. Okay, no, that might have just been the sucking back up. Now it's pulsating. There we go. Beautiful. Exactly as I expected. Okay. Let's let that cool down. Hopefully it's going to fix the boot issues. No, we still get a strange boot sequence. It doesn't give us a complete sequence. Still stuck at like 250 milliamps. Something's not quite right. Yeah, and it keeps repeating that boot sequence. So it's trying, failing, and then trying again. Okay, the second time it doesn't try again. But that's not going to work. Or at least it's very, very unlikely. Uh, I'll, I'll try it, but it's very unlikely. We do have some of the boot sequence back. So it's not got the 40 milliamp boot sequence now. It's just one of the power rails is preventing it from turning on. Mm-hmm. Back to how we was. Oh, that sucks. Uh, <laughs> okay. I think it's time to call it quits on this one. I don't know what's wrong with it. <laughs> I don't have a clue. Uh, we did get a boot sequence back. Um, so the BIOS chip was at fault. But what don't make any sense to me on this one is that the... If the BIOS chip has gone faulty, then how has something else gone bad? Or has someone done something to it? Has someone put a bad chip on it somewhere? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know, I can't see any prior repairs, so I don't know. But, yeah, it's very strange. Um, with their schematics, it's, it's pretty much impossible on this one, I think. Um, might be a candidate for a revisit in the future, but we'll see. Um, I might put this one to one side and not strip it unless I really absolutely have to. Um, so I may revisit it in the future, I may not, but I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, really appreciate it. If you do have any comments or questions, let me know down in the comment section down below. I'll always do my best to answer. And if you do want to organise a repair, check out the website consolefix.co.uk. You can book in the repair, send it over, and I'll do my best to fix yours as well. If you do need any parts and supplies for these, consolefix.shop, check it out. That's my online store where I strip down these boards and things and I sell the parts off them when they're non good parts. I do get diode readings and things of the parts before I actually strip them off the boards to make sure that they're all good and compare them against working readings. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.